the first thing we want to do is label the distance between the viewer and the wall here as x. And then after doing so, we want to look at two right triangles. There is a larger right triangle that we will outline here in yellow, and then there is the smaller right triangle, which we will outline in green. Let's go ahead and redraw those two right triangles. For the first right triangle, the bottom leg here is x, and then the other leg is going to be h plus d. For the green triangle, we have the bottom leg x, and the other leg is d. Let's introduce some other labels. We're going to call this angle theta, excuse me, alpha, and this angle beta. And in the original drawing, that alpha would be this larger angle here, and then the beta would be this tinier angle right here. Hopefully we can see from the diagram that the angle theta would equal alpha minus beta. And that's going to become useful. Let's rewrite that, that theta is equal to alpha minus beta. Looking at the yellow triangle, hopefully we can see that we have for alpha a way of finding it. And to do that, we're going to write down, this is for the yellow triangle, that the tangent of alpha would equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And to solve for alpha, you would take the inverse tangent. So alpha would equal the inverse tangent of h plus d over x. Now, similarly, for the green triangle, we could show that beta is equal to the inverse tangent of d over x. Now, with those two expressions for alpha and beta, we can rewrite our equation for theta as follows, theta would equal our alpha minus our beta. Now, once we have our equation for theta expressed as a function of the variable x, in order to maximize it, we're going to need to compute the derivative with respect to x. So right now, we're doing the derivative of our theta with respect to x. Now, looking at this first term here, let's recall that to do the derivative of an inverse tangent function, you would do 1 over 1 plus whatever function is in the parentheses, so h plus d over x squared, don't forget to square that function, then you also have to multiply by the derivative of that inner function. Now, the derivative of h plus d over x might require a little bit of an aside. So we're going to do the derivative of h plus d over x with respect to x. It will be useful to rewrite that as h plus d times x to the negative 1. That way we can do a simple power rule. We would multiply negative 1 by the constant h plus d, and then our x would have a new power of negative 2 because we have to subtract 1 from the negative 1. It would also be nice to rewrite this as negative h plus d over x to the positive 2. So that will be our derivative of that sort of inner function. We're going to apply the same principles to the next inverse tangent function. So that would be this one right here. So we'll have minus, we'll do 1 over 1 plus the inner function d over x squared. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of d over x. So we'll do something very similar over here. Instead of writing d over x, it's useful to write that as dx to the negative 1, because then we can do a power rule. Negative 1 times d is negative d, and then we have x to the power of negative 2. And let's rewrite the x to the negative 2 as x to the positive 2 in the denominator. So here we have multiplication by negative d over x to the positive 2. So there is our derivative, and it's going to be wise if we simplify our derivative. And to do that, we will multiply the numerators here. So 1 times negative h plus d, of course, is just negative h plus d. In the denominator, it gets a little tricky. Let us understand that this h plus d over x squared can be rewritten. We can actually square the numerator, so h plus d squared, and square the denominator. And by doing that, we're going to be able to simplify it because we'll distribute this x squared. Now, x squared times 1 is x squared. And when you distribute the x squared to the, to the next term, this x squared and that x squared that you're distributing will cancel. And that's going to leave you with just h plus d squared. Over here, we're multiplying a negative 1 by a negative d. So that becomes a positive d in the numerator. And then same ballgame over here, this d over x squared. Let's just kind of rewrite that 
as d squared over x squared. So now we'll distribute the x squared. x squared times 1 is x squared. And when you distribute the x squared to the d over x squared like this, what will happen is that x squared and that x squared that you're distributing will cancel. So you're left with just a d squared there. So that's a nice and simplified version of our derivative. Remember now we're trying to maximize theta. So to maximize, we can't just compute the derivative. We have to set the derivative equal to zero. So that's what we will do next. And to solve this, it might be best if we found a common denominator. So it gets a little interesting here because we're adding two fractions together. We need to find a common denominator. So for example, for the second denominator, we would have to multiply it by that first denominator. And we would have to do the same thing up here in the numerator. And for the first denominator, we would have to multiply it by the other denominator, by the x squared plus d squared. So we have established a common denominator, and it is useful then to write everything over that common denominator. So it looks like our common denominator is x squared plus d squared times the quantity x squared plus h plus d squared. Our numerator is negative h plus d times x squared plus d squared plus d times the quantity x squared plus h plus d squared. This is all equal to 0. OK. now. Another useful thing would be to write that 0 over 1, because then we can cross multiply. We would multiply this quantity by 0, and that would still give us 0, fortunately. And then we would multiply this numerator here by 1, and that would just give us the numerator. So let's go ahead and recopy that numerator. Next, we will FOIL the h plus d and the x squared plus d squared. So we'll multiply h times x squared, multiply h times d squared, We'll multiply d times x squared. We'll multiply d times d squared. This will give us d cubed. Watch out, though, here, because remember, we have this minus sign on the outside. And what happens is that minus will distribute. And that's going to change all of those plus signs into minus signs. So let's make that adjustment. And then we have plus d times the quantity x squared plus, OK, watch out here, h plus d squared. You would have to write h plus d times h plus d, and then you have to FOIL that out. So you would get h squared plus 2hd plus d cubed. This is all equal to 0. Let's now go ahead and distribute this d to all four terms. This would give us a plus dx squared plus dh squared plus 2hd squared plus d cubed. And then we have all of these terms as well. Now, it looks like we get some further simplifying. The negative d cubed and the positive d cubed cancel. The negative dx squared and the positive dx squared cancel. And then a minus 1hd squared plus 2hd squared would give us a plus 1hd squared. We also have this plus dh squared. And we also have this minus hx squared. Now remember, our goal is to solve for x. We are getting there. Let's go ahead and add the hx squared to both sides. We could then divide every term here by h. The first term will become dh. The second term is just d squared. The third term on the other side is x squared. Finally, to solve for x, we can take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we will be left with the square root of dh plus d squared will equal x. If you want, you can factor out a common factor of d. So inside the radical, you would have d times quantity h plus d. This is the value of x that's going to maximize that viewing angle theta. Now, if your teacher wants some extra work to sort of prove that this maximizes theta, you would probably have to do a first derivative test. It would be a little bit thorny in this case because you'd have to plot your critical number on a number line. And then you'd have to pick a test point to the left of the critical number as well as one to the right. You would have to show that the derivative of theta with respect to x at your first test value is greater than zero or positive, which means that your theta function would be increasing. 
and then for your second test point, you would have to show that d theta dx is less than zero or negative, which would mean that your theta function is decreasing, and that would illustrate the fact that at the critical number, we have indeed a maximum value. So theta is maximized at a value of x equal to the square root of d times h plus d.